So now I have my base cleaned up, and I'm going to add my, the bottom. I cut off another piece of slab. The bottom thickness of slab should be at least the thickness of the pot, or a little bit thicker, for, for this type of pot. I put a sheet of newspaper there as a guide for after it's cut. And I lightly trace the bottom, flip it over, and score, and then slip. And I'll set it on there, keep it in the round if you want it to be round, which I do, and then kind of shimmy it and tap it. And now I'll cut the bottom. The idea here for the paddling is that the bottom is actually going to come up onto the side of the pot. So I don't want to cut it straight like that, because that would leave a big wad of clay coming up onto the pot. So I'll take my knife and I'll angle it close in so that I can just see a little bit of a rim around the bottom. And I use this newspaper now to sort of scooch that bottom up onto the side of the pot. All right, now that we have the base added onto the pot, we're going to peel the newspaper away and get, us, get some foam. And we're going to paddle. The first thing we're going to do is just paddle the base so that it sticks. That's all we're doing right now. My fingers are right where that, the wall of the pot meets the base of the pot. The goal of this demo is to show how various forms can be made just from this one particular form. So if I were to take this pot and put a handle on it, it's a perfectly acceptable mug. It works. But we can alter this form a lot by paddling. The next thing you want to do is get rid of this sharp line that happens when you paddle it on. And I'm going to paddle right on that line. And just keep in mind that the whole time you want to keep your fingers on the seam that you'll feel on the inside. So just by softening that, it changes the form a little more. We're going to keep going with this because on this particular form, I'm going to paddle it into uh, a rounded bottom that we're going to then add a foot ring to. And now I really have to look at it from the top because this will tell me everywhere that's flat, everywhere that's sticking out, and I'll just paddle it around to get it back into the round. Now that I have the form that I want, I'm going to make a foot ring for the pot. So I've cut out a little square of clay from my larger slab, I'm just even, evening it out a little bit. And I also want the foot ring to have a pretty good thickness because it has to support this whole pot. I find these biscuit cutters very handy tools to have in the studio. They come in a small circular size and a large circular size. They also come in many other shapes. You can usually get them at cooking stores. Uh, sometimes you can find them in craft stores in the, in the baking section. What I'll do is I'll just grab one of the rings and I'm trying to determine how to come up with the size of the foot ring. So I'll just set this on here and whichever um, circle template seems to nestle right there as sort of the, at the base diameter. That's the one I'm going to choose for the outer ring. I will cornstarch the slab because these are metal rings and they tend to stick. In my own studio I have a little container just filled with the cornstarch and I just dust it and sometimes you can dip that in. And I'll take my outer ring and cut. Pull that out. The next thing I need to decide is how high do I want the foot ring? I'm just going to roll that edge a little bit, soften it, and I will use my cloth to soften these edges because, again, it eliminates cleanup. You can also use a very thin piece of plastic if you don't have cloth. This is just a piece of pillowcase. The next thing I'm going to decide is how high do I want the foot ring? So I'll try a couple different circles in determining how high I want it. So I'll place this in the center of this and 
whatever this measurement is becomes the height of the foot ring. I'd like the foot ring to be a little higher than that one. So I just take this and center it. I just do it by eye and press in and pull that off. Now to create the actual ring, you have to keep in mind that this foot ring has to go on a slant. So you want to set that up to get it in place. So I just made this little cone out of clay. And once we talk about circular templates, I'll show you how to make one of these. It's basically a cone is just a circle with a piece of the pie cut out. And I'll take this and I'll center that circle on the point of the cone and push down. And what this does is it gives me the foot ring, but it also sets up the slant that I need to go on to the curve of the pot. So I'll take the pot again, and I'll set it here, and pull this off, and set it right on top there, and center it. And then just take this and sort of snug it in so that it's nicely attached. I'm not attaching it. It's just setting it in place. I need to have this set up a bit before I can attach anything because clay is a waiting game. You have to wait for it to get to the right consistency. The right consistency for attaching most things is leather hard where the clay is still wet but it doesn't move. The one thing that's really important is that you want to make sure that the edge, and I need to actually come down on this and make sure that I have it level. You want to make sure that the edge of the foot ring is not lower than the slope of your pot. Because that's a mistake that you can make if you cut this inner ring out too wide. So I just have a little tool, and I kind of hold it up, and I can see that the slope is well under that. And the next thing is, because we have to wait for it to set up, I use these plastic grocery bags that I think we all we seem to multiply in our drawers. I want to keep the walls of the pot wet, but I want the base to set up because I will alter this. And the only way to do that is to wrap part of it. I call it selective drying. So I'll just set this in here, pull this up around, and just pull the plastic just around to where that bottom part is that I want to have set up. And then just clip it. 